Now, compliance is the reciprocal of elastance. Work of breathing is needed to come, overcome elastic resistance and non-elastic resistance. When we talk about static compliance, it's needed to overcome elastic resistance. So the elastic forces of the lung and chest wall, as well as the resistance from surface tension at the alveolar gas liquid interface. When we talk about dynamic compliance, you have to include non-elastic resistance. So that includes the frictional um, resistance to gas flow or airways resistance and viscoelastic resistance. Now the compliance equals the change in volume for a given change in pressure. And this is the formula here, and it's analogous to capacitance in series. Know that NUNS uses liters per kilopascals and the conversion is one liter per kilopascals equals 98 mils per centimeter of water. So I believe the figures that NUN has is 1.5 um, for lung. And sorry, this is, this is lung. I'm going to annotate that. And this is chest wall. Okay. That's lung and that's chest wall. And when you add them up, that's the figure that you get. You get approximately 85 mils per centimeter of water, where normal is between 50 to 100. Now, specific compliance equals compliance and I guess um, more correct to say static compliance divided by FRC because it's the intrinsic elastic property of the lung and size does matter. In other words, the bigger you are, the more compliance you have. In other words, adults are more compliant than, um, than sort of children or elephants are more compliant than rats. But when you use that, this formula here where you divide it by FRC, you can see that uh, the specific compliance remains the same. Okay. So static compliance is measured at fixed volumes where non-elastic resistance is excluded. And dynamic compliance is measured during normal breathing at points of no flow and inspiratory and, and expiratory where non-elastic resistance is included. And static compliance is always more than dynamic compliance. So the gradient is always steeper. In other words, there is always a greater change in volume for a given change in pressure when you compare them both. Or the other way to sort of phrase it is that for a given change in volume, there is a less change in pressure for static compliance. And this is, this is what I also want you to understand is that Static, so static compliance measured at fixed volumes up to total lung capacity. Dynamic compliance is measured during normal breathing, which is part of volume. And so that, and so that is why it's quite, you know, this is why it's so difficult when trainees try to superimpose static and dynamic compliance curves onto a, either a tidal volume, um, axes or a total lung capacity axis. In other words, what I'm saying is, you know, we've got candidates who would draw this curve here for static compliance, and then after that, they would draw the same sort of curve for dynamic compliance. Remember that dynamic compliance is only measured during normal breathing, tidal volume. This is a static compliance curve uh, from West. So this is the general shape of a static compliance curve. Now you're gonna ask me, why is it only a liter? It's a liter because this is, I believe, a cat, I know, or a dog. And apologies to all the cat or dog lovers there. West did do a lot of his experiments on these animals. So that's why it's one. But this one represents total lung capacity for the poor cat or dog in this experiment here. This is a dynamic compliance curve. So this is the one from uh, nuns. And as you can see, you've got tidal volume. And from here to here represents your dynamic compliance. And this is the type of graph that you will see um, 
when uh, you've got a patient under anesthesia where you're, where you're delivering uh, volume control ventilation. And again, just to sort of let you know, if you have an inspiratory pause, so you put an inspiratory pause, what you'll see is you'll see, so your volume doesn't change, but you'll see your pressure drop. you see your pressure drop here, and then after that you'll see the curve um, start to come down. So this represents your P peak or max. Uh, this point here represents your P plateau. So P plateau is here, P max is here, okay? This graph, I'll tell you why this graph is confusing. This graph is confusing because pressure is on your x-axis. But when you see it in theater, you'll have pressure on the y-axis and you'll have time on the x-axis. And you'll see this graph here. <laughs>